Hi, I'm Allie. And I'm Matt. And we are from Bakersfield, California, and we recently quit our jobs and are now traveling the Americas in our big red van, Clifford. So we converted Clifford in about six weeks, so we definitely did it in a hurry. We tried to capture as much footage as we can, but if you have any questions about how we built something or how we did some piece of the van, please leave us some comments or questions. We'd love to make more videos detailing exactly how we did it. What are you doing? I'm laying up the cutouts for this. This is a fireplace stand. I don't think we've really shown this. Um, no, because Rob did it. Yeah, so we have a wood burning stove right there. It's uh, made by Cubic Wood Stoves. That's the Grizzly. Like they're slightly larger version, but still pretty tiny. Um, so this is the stand it's gonna sit on. Um, so I'm putting a piece of hardy board, cement board, underneath it, just as kind of a heat shield because we're going to store some firewood in like a cubby underneath. So I'm notching out for these uh, legs we have right here, and these are for heat shields for the sides. We'll have a cabinet um, behind it, so I'm running a piece of 16 gauge galvanized steel here and on the back, so there will be a couple, like a series of air gaps between the stove and the cabinet, and then this side will be facing this sliding door on the passenger side. Um, so we'll be doing the same thing there. And then, obviously this is open to the front, kind of facing the front of the van, and this will be open to the rest of the van, um, facing across towards the kitchen. So the stove will be facing this way, kind of pointing forward towards the front of the van. So yeah, I'm gonna notch out this hardy board and then I'm gonna lay some tile on top of it. We had a 20 inch tile from our room upstairs in the house and uh, we had one chipped one, so I think we're gonna make that look a little bit better. Little notch. Two more. What are you doing? I'm going to install some brackets for our fireplace stand. They're going to hold a shelf that we will put our like firewood on, and then we'll have like a cubby underneath for shoes or whatever else. What'd you make these out of? So the fireplace stand is made out of 16th inch one by one tube steel. It's welded together. Um, it's pretty strong. It's actually surprisingly light. And then the brackets are the same angle iron I used to support the dividers, like the cargo dividers that we kept in the van. Um, this is 16 gauge. Uh, galvanized one and a half by one and a half inch, but I mean you could use kind of whatever angle um, Just kind of building a platform for this shelf to fit on the alley cut out Sweet And then beans. I will uh, I'm clamping them 
I'm gonna pre-drill so that way you know I'm, they stay in the right spot. Um, I figured using a self-tapper, there's too much stuff moving around, and then my shelf would end up all wonky. So that's the plan. Let's do it. So we are pretty much done with the fireplace stand. I think we had a previous video showing it a little bit less complete. Welded up all the, uh, basically the whole stand's made out of one by one by 1 16th tube steel. And one of my roommates helped me kind of weld it up. We built a little shelf in there so that we can store some firewood underneath it. Underneath the stove, I put a half inch piece of hardy board, like concrete backer board. And then we used a porcelain tile that we had from the house. Um, that was definitely a challenge. Take my glove off. We had, um, I had to drill some holes in there for the feet. And initially tried to use this style bit, just like a tile bit. And it took me about 45 minutes to drill one hole. Luckily I had previously bought this Milwaukee um, diamond hole saw, but I bought it in the wrong size. So initially I didn't try to use that, but this thing worked great going through the porcelain. It took like 60 seconds to drill a hole instead of 45 minutes. So definitely win. On the sides, I used, I tried to make this like double air gap to make sure everything's well insulated. Um, Cause this will be sitting next to the sliding door and next to a cabinet behind it. So I haven't tested this out yet, but I'm hoping it works. I used just a, I think it's 20 gauge galvanized sheet metal that I got. It was just scrap. I picked it up with a tube steel. Um, there were some rims at a steel supplier. And then I hit those with a sanding disc, kind of in a circular pattern to give it some cool texture. So I think it looks pretty nice. And then I just need to through bolt this into the bottom of the van and it'll be good. Good to go. We're installing rock wool insulation near the stove. We're not sure if this is the right thing to do, but it's high temperature. And we're doing it anyway. I wanted something near the fireplace flue that wouldn't catch on fire. So obviously poly iso, which we did for everything else, was not a good choice for, you know, several hundred degree temperatures. So this is good like 2000, but it is a lot more like fiberglass than I thought it was. So we're a little concerned about the fibers and whatnot, but we got to put something up here. So. This is what we're using. Yeah. So what you doing? Sealing this bad boy. So what's this orange thing called? This is called a deckite fitting. It's basically like a silicone boot. Wraps around here and it's got some aluminum flashing. It's also called a like flashing, I guess, but. Um, You're yeah. using butyl tape? So I'm gonna use butyl tape around the base. Pretty much the same thing we do with the Max fans. Butyl tape, screw it down, come back, do lap sealing it around the outside and over the screws. Also I need some high temperature silicone for this. It's like a, an RTV silicone. Um, it seals pretty good, but there's like a seam since it's a double walled pipe. So I wanna get just like a bead of silicone around this, but it has to be high temperature because this can get pretty hot.
so we used a fire stop here and in between here is just wainscoting and then we have some rock wool insulation that you can see that it's about an inch from this pipe um, but yeah it's high temperature it's rated up to like 2000 degrees Fahrenheit so yeah that's gonna be our insulation near stove hopefully it should work what's up guys so I wanted to show you a little bit about the stove it's pretty much done and installed um, I know I took a little video of uh, kind of while we were building it and constructing it but um, this was an area that I had to do a lot of research because it's something that not a lot of people do and a lot of people tell you you can't do it, um, but I'd seen people do it successfully, so I knew it was possible, but definitely an area that you wanna like make sure you do it safely and correctly as possible. So I'm gonna show you what I did. Don't know it's 100% correct, um, but we've tested it We'll let it you out. know in a couple months. <laughs> yeah, we've tested it out once or twice, um, and it seems fine. I think if we get somewhere really cold and we're running it a lot, um, we might see a little bit more temperatures, but um, I'll kind of let you know how it went. So I think I showed the construction of kind of the stand. I had a friend help me who was more proficient at welding than me. Um, we just made it out of one inch by one inch tube steel and just kind of made a frame for this to sit on. Um, there's some angle iron that runs under here for this these feet to bolt to. And on top of that, there's a piece of half inch hardy board, which is cement backer board for like tile. And then we used a piece of tile uh, from our old house and cut that to size. Um, the tile was really hard to work with. It was porcelain tile, so it's really, really hard. I was able to use like a cutoff wheel on a grinder to kind of cut the edges and cut it to size so it fit on here correctly. Drilling through it was super challenging. I had to buy, at first I bought like a tile bit, which took me about 40 minutes to drill one hole for the foot. Um, so we bought a diamond uh, hole saw and that worked great. It went through in like two to three minutes. So I definitely recommend that if you're trying to drill through tile. Um, but yeah, I basically kind of set the stove on here where I wanted it, marked everything, drilled the holes, kept transferring the holes to the next piece and drilling those. Um, I did have to oversize the holes so that everything fit through there uh, to give it a little bit of play. But yeah. I also cracked that when I tightened it down. Can I show that? I don't know if you can see it you in the video. You can see it on yeah, the video. Yeah, yeah. I tightened this foot and I cracked the tile from like here to here, this whole corner. But I glued it back on, it looks good still. So, um, yeah, the design we used was like, a, I heard an air gap was kind of an improved method for most fireplaces to keep temperature off of anything uh, combustible. So I actually did like a double air gap since I had this one inch piece of tube steel. So this is a 20 gauge galvanized plate. I got this from the same place I picked up this square tubing from. Um, they just had a pile of leftover metal. You can usually buy it pretty cheap. So it was like 90 cents a pound for all this metal. It was like 30 bucks. Um, so yeah, I screwed a little plate of this on each side. Um, that way heat has to transfer through this metal, across this air gap into this one, and across this into anything to affect the door or the wall or the cabinet or anything behind it. So, so far on first test, this looks like it's worked really, really well. Um, the second, the backside of this air gap is like still cold basically after I ran this for like an hour and a half. Um, so I think that's really good. The tile seems to be working really well for controlling the heat underneath it because we are gonna store firewood directly underneath it. Um, so I pulled this down so you can see one of the things places you also need an air gap is at the roof where the flue passes through the van. Um, so this is called a fire stop or ceiling support. And I got this one from Lowe's, I think. Um, basically all this does is it goes around the pipe here and then forces you to have like a one inch air gap to anything around it. So you can see up here where we had to cut out the ceiling um, quite a bit larger than the pipe. So that provides the air gap here. We also used mineral wool just in this area of the van. So just in this section of the roof panel, we use uh, mineral wool instead of polyiso, which is how we did the rest of the van, just because 
we were concerned about the temperature and wanted to make sure that whatever material we put up there wasn't flammable. So the mineral walls get to like 2000 degrees Fahrenheit, whereas polyiso is gonna start melting and potentially combustible over like 250, 300 degrees. Um, so yeah, so this five stop fits up in this hole like that. Um, I did the same kind of pattern on everything just to try to make it match. I made, I made this with a grinder and a sanding disc on it. Um, I think it turned out pretty cool. It looks a little better than just like flat galvanized because uh, I don't think it's very pretty. And a lot of the stuff we got since it's from the rim pile was kind of dirty and tarnished. So, so that's kind of what that looks like. Um, on the top, I can take them out there. So on the top, that's what we look like right now. So I used a silicone deckite fitting. It's a number two. Uh, it was from like a one inch to three inch pipe, something like that. So I'm right at the maximum size of that, which I wanted to kind of keep the deckite fitting small. Um, but yeah, that silicone boot basically seals around the outside of the pipe. And then it's got this aluminum flashing, which I just screwed down with sheet metal screws into the roof. Um, and then came back with lap sealant and sealed it up. There is a, actually I used butyl tape underneath the, the lip of the silicone just to make sure it seals really well. Not 100% sure how that's gonna handle the temperature, but when I test ran it the other day for like an hour and a half, the silicone was pretty cool. Um, definitely easily handleable at the touch. And then even the top of the flue pipe, I could uh, intermittently touch, I could tap without you know getting too warm. So it didn't seem like there was too much temperature building up right there. Um, so yeah, so far that seems to be working well. I have a little cap on there. So we're gonna have a cap that I keep on there mainly when we're driving and whenever it's not in use. And then I'll have a, like a rain cap, more of a traditional like chimney flue cap that I can swap out when we, uh, when we are using it. And I can reach that, it ended up a little bit taller than I had planned initially. Um, but I can still reach it from the, from the van. Like when I'm tall, so I can swap it out. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, we through bolted this through the floor of the van. Um, so there's four bolts down at the bottom here that go through to the floor. Um, same kind of thing I've been doing for all the cabinets and the bed, um, just to make sure if we get an accident or anything, this thing's not going anywhere. Likewise, all four of those feet have bolts through into the frame. So everything should be pretty solid um, and safe, hopefully. Are you gonna screw this in or is it just loose? Yeah, I am. It's loose right now, but I'm gonna put a couple of sheet metal screws through that into the, the roof just to kind of hold it in place um, so it doesn't like vibrate and fall down. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. If you have any questions about putting a wood stove in a van, I did a lot of research on that too, and I think what we have seems to work pretty well. Um, like I said, we'll, we'll definitely let you know after we get somewhere significantly colder and have to run it for you know several hours. But it puts off a lot of heat. I was running it with all the doors open, and it was still pretty warm in here. Um, so we'll see how it goes. So we had a little bit of water leaking down the inside of the flue pipe for the stove and now that it's kind of calmed down I came up here to try to take a look at it and it looks like this the silicone I tried to use around the boot did not stick to the stainless steel very well so it's actually making this little pocket where water's getting caught and probably squeezing through the silicone that way so I'm actually going to pull this off we're going to get some more rain this afternoon probably and see if it helps so we wanted to talk a little bit about our wood stove and I think we finally have everything kind of dialed in. Um, you saw some of the issues we had with it leaking where the flue pipe passes through the silicone deckite fitting on the roof. While we were visiting my aunt and uncle in Charlotte, he runs an aquarium store and he ended up giving me some new silicone. So I pulled off all of the fire stop, 3M stuff that we had, um, cleaned it up with alcohol and then reapplied it some aquarium silicone. I don't know exactly what it was, 
Um, but so far that seems to be working really well. I went up there and inspected it and it still looks great. So that worked well for us. So the stove has gotten a little bit of rust on it, um, particularly on the top, some areas that got scuffed when we were installing it. Um, we didn't do a good job of reapplying paint to that. Also, we used some barbecue paint for the stand and that's showing a little bit of rust too, underneath the paint. So I think maybe we should have used a different paint. We used like a, a barbecue paint on the stand, even though the stand doesn't really get that hot. So I think we probably should have used something a little bit different because it just doesn't seem to be that robust and durable. It's kind of rubbing off on the top where you see people who can have put their hand on when they're getting in and out of the van. Um, so something to be aware of. I don't think the high temp barbecue paint is super strong. I know they make a high temp enamel for like engines and stuff that I've used before. Um, so that might be a good choice. We also wanted to talk a little bit about our chimney cap. Um, we had a lot of trouble finding one that actually fit. So the pipe that we get from, that we got from Cubic Mini Wood Stoves is a double wall, three inch. And a lot of the stuff that you'll see in Home Depot is for like pellet stoves and it's all just single wall three inch. So I think the actual flanges on the top and bottom are a little bit different size. Because we tried three different caps, I think. Mm -hmm. Like two from Lowe's, one from Home Depot, and I think another one from Amazon. And none of them fit right. So we ended up with an adjustable cap that we got off of Amazon. So we were able to kind of customize it and just tighten it down around the top flange. Um, other options, there are some marine fittings that I think are made for double wall pipe from like Dickinson, but they were pretty expensive. It was like a hundred bucks for the chimney cap because it's all stainless. Um, so the one we got that's adjustable, I think was like $15 and seems to work really well. So we're going to stick with that for now. And then if we see any issues with the, the galvanizing, um, and it's starting to corrode or something like that, maybe we'll look at a Dickinson fitting. The only issue that we have seen is in the rain when you're driving with that fitting on because you siliconed it in, right? Mm -hmm. How did you stick it in there? It has um, some clamps basically, so they're just tightened down on the top. Initially we had wanted to swap them out, so I was going to take the rain cap off and put on just a solid, like a, a full cap when we were driving and not prevent any water, rain, any wind from coming in. I wasn't sure if just like the driving wind would cause any issues trying to push ash out or do anything like that um, which so far hasn't been the case with just a rain cap up there but we found that we got some soot on the cap after the first use and then when you brought that into the van it smelled really really bad it was like uncontrollable you couldn't like put it in a bag couldn't do anything mm -hmm. so we decided it had to stay on the roof 100 percent of the time but alice is totally right when we drive in the rain um you get enough kind of sideways movement of the rain that it'll come through the rain cap and ends up inside the flue pipe. So you've had some of that leak out of like the inner wall of the flue pipe onto the top of the stove um, when we're driving really, really heavy rain. If you like this video, what should you do? Subscribe! And subscribe! <laughs> Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you have any questions, if you're like, what the heck, what, what did they do? They skipped over this part. Hit us up. We'll make sure to respond. <laughs> oh, Amber, you're such a good girl.